happens here. It goes down, at least be on film. Yeah, it's... <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want that thing to lose that thing. Holy cow. What's that? There you go. Well, th this is uh, uniquely a very, very busy day, I think. I'm not sure if we've always done it like this. I think maybe we had uh, planned for not practice day um, on National Signing Day, but uh, today in particular, um, you know, a lot of things going on. So, um, but we started off at 7 in the morning, and uh, I think we had everything pretty much wrapped up with exception to maybe Luther Richardson, who is in central time, had to wait an hour. So I think had had everything pretty much wrapped up by about 7.20 or 7, uh, 7.30. And uh, all in all, very, very good. Um, obviously, you can you can look at it and read it. 20 guys we signed, um, 19 high school guys, I think, uh, eight from Ohio, what we could consider 14 from a 300-mile radius, which is the core and the crux of our program. And, uh, again, sticking into that same kind of mold of the things that uh, – you know, we want to be, you know, 75 or so percent from that 300 mile radius. Um, and then we signed, you know, I think six, one from New Jersey, one from Maryland, three from Florida and one from Alabama, which really, to me, um, gives us a lot of opportunities. Uh, we've, we've not just say we broadened it, but you know, I think this is first time we've had a guy from Jersey in a while. First time we've had a guy from Maryland in a while. First time we've had a guy from Alabama. Um, and obviously we've continued to have guys from Florida. But all in all, I think uh, really, really, really good mix. And I think it's becoming a little bit more unique um, as to exactly how many you can sign, you do sign. Um, used to be, and I'm not, not getting onto a tangent, but it, you know, recruiting is the lifeblood of what it is that we do and, and how you build. And I think right now it's still a little bit, it's becoming a little bit different. I think still recruiting is number one, or actually number one is retaining our guys. <clears throat> These guys that you got in your program, you got to be able to retain them. And I think with a lot of the things you're seeing in the last year, um, with guys having opportunities to take off and things, I think it's it's really, really key that you can retain these guys so that you have a chance to continue to build a relationship and develop them. Um, so retain, retention is big. Recruiting, obviously, is, is another one. And then your ability to fill in the gaps and the things that you, for us, that we might need or we don't get through recruiting um, with possibly some transfers or some are referring to as the free agency of, of college football today. Um, so, but for us, th this is this is the way we build our program. This is the way we continue to grow our program is through recruiting, and uh, it's not going to change. And um, you know, we're excited and happy uh, about the class we've got, and uh, you know, excited. I think we've got nine of them, maybe ten, nine high school guys, and one of the the transfer guys that will be in here as of January 10th to uh, be involved in all of our winter workouts and, and spring football which gives us a big advantage, um, gives those guys a big advantage to uh, seeing if they can help us, you know, early on, especially, um, you know, with, with the amount of seniors that we're losing. You want to start us off? I got the mic. <laughs> Can I just keep it? I see you got the mic before I even started, so <laughs> I guess that means you were going to be first. With such a really large senior class, 30-plus seniors, how important was this – particular signing class so you can kind of start building that next not that you haven't already no. but to start building that next wave I, well yes I think it's it's critical um, I think if you're looking to build it from this class you're in trouble in some ways I think you've always got to be looking two years out and you know I think that's where some of the transfer stuff starts to become a you know something that's a possibility but that's not the route that we want to go that's not how we want to build um the unique thing is, is yes, there's this is a large senior class, but you still roster management is, is very unique in, in how everybody's going to do it, you know, because there's a lot of guys that are seniors that still have possibilities if they really wanted to, um, to come back. And uh, so for the next few years, not ever really knowing, you know, exactly what class a lot of these guys are in, it's it's it makes it difficult to manage, you know, some of the things that you're doing, especially in the recruiting side of things. Uh, Luke, I know this is just the second question and we're talking about signing day, but as far as playoff prep goes this week, how do you like your team's mindset right now and just mentality where they are right now? Well, I think 
you know, we're, we are in prep, but it's not like we are prepping for the game just yet. Um, so the mentality is awesome. If you would have come out there of, of practice today, um, you would have recognized, like, what's going on out here? I mean, I think, you know, the ball goes down. Those guys compete, especially some of the young guys towards the end of practice. Uh, and it gets very energetic. And so, so the mindset, I think, is in a really good place. I think what we're trying to do as coaches is not – you know, really start doing what we need to do and, and preparing too soon because, you know, as 18 to 22 year olds, it, it doesn't take much to make them bored. And I'm not saying, well, they're going to be bored going into a, you know, a, a playoff game and against a team like Alabama. No, I, I know that. But if you practice nine practices the same way, all preparing for, you know, for one game, yeah, by the, by the time the, the last three practices come, um, yeah, it's a little bit monotonous. So there's a good balance to what it is we're doing and trying to give these guys an opportunity to you know play, have a little bit of fun, um, all while preparing you know for the ultimate goal. You spoke on retention and the impact of the portal. How do you go about building and maintaining relationships with those guys who are maybe third and fourth on the depth chart? They're not a, pl- a part of maybe the immediate plan, but they could be in the future. Well, they are what your future is. That's why, if you know, if you say, "Hey, you're losing a lot of seniors, so you got to have a really good class this year," I mean, if you're banking on a lot of these young guys being core, a, a core nucleus to what it, not saying they can't help and they can't saying they can't play, because you know, there's a lot of guys on here that that you might say, "Hey, those guys got a great opportunity, especially if they come in early," um, of really finding a way to get on the football field for you. When this year, you know, besides Mason Fletcher. Uh, there's, you know, not many of those true freshman guys that, not saying even playing, but even have much of a role. I mean, Brian Threats is, does a great job on special teams and is a backup. Um, other than that, you know, there's not there's not many guys that travel with us. You know, this group could be different, could be different because of the amount of seniors that we have. But I think it's really critical if you start to look back at the, the year before his recruiting class and, and maybe even that year before, you know, so it's that two-year period that I think one of the best thing our our coaches have done is our ability to retain these guys. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's for sure. I mean, it's it's always, you know, just as soon as you say you've done a great job at retention, next thing you know you've got a bunch of guys that you're missing. But I think it has a lot to do with the relationships, has a lot to do with the time spent with them, um, and it has a lot to do with honesty because, you know, if you're honest with them and you've built something with them, you know, when times are tough, which you could ask about every freshman on our team right now that didn't get much opportunity to play, times are tough, you know. And some people say, well, you're winning, you guys are in a play. I know, but we all have a selfish nature to us. And um, so our ability to continue to retain those guys, to give us a chance to help develop them, that's where the future really comes. And, uh, you know, we'll see how many of these guys coming in here, especially the ones that come in early, um, that can make a true impact on what it is that we're doing. The Big 12 stuff kind of happened middle to late of this cycle. Expanded playoff talk happened a little before that. Some of the guys already were committed, but what impact did that have from kind of an evaluation and recruiting standpoint on your end and maybe reception on recruiting? I don't know that it changed anything on our end exactly like, well, all of a sudden we got to go find a guy that's an inch taller and a tenth faster now because we're going into the Big 12. We've always kind of said, hey, we want to find the right ones. We've never looked at ourselves as anything different. You know, the, the league, you know, whether it's the AAC or it's the Big 12. I mean, we're looking for the best players. Now, were there some doors that can possibly open and, and probably some hurdles that were taken down? There's no doubt. You know, probably the biggest thing that has, you know, hindered us um, in the recruit. I'm not saying hindered us. I, I, it has been a point of emphasis and a sticking point with a lot of you know, recruits was the league and that P5 connotation that when we are officially in the Big 12, I'll still say the same thing. I don't know why we would say there's any separation, any difference between leagues, um, whether there's direct, you know, lines to the playoffs or whatever it is. The reality is, you know, we're all playing on the same field and we all know that some people have more resources than others, but, you know, it comes down to how do you use yours and, uh, so with that being said, I think maybe we had a lot of those guys before that came out. There's very few guys that we got because our biggest time is during the summer, and we did a phenomenal job. Our coaches and you know the, the, the recruiting over the summer that our kids did as well uh, with the visits was really, really good. And uh, what I think maybe that Big 12 you know, hit 
did for us was you know maybe give us a little bit more uh, strength with those guys we already had committed as they're really good football players and they play a little bit more their senior year and guys outside of COVID start to recognize who they are and and you know how good they are that you know maybe they were already committed to us but it, it allowed us to you know have another little bullet in the chamber to combat when uh, people were trying to come after them and then winning takes care of a lot of things in a lot of ways to piggyback off that a little how much does the success of guys like Ahmad and Dez and and Maijay, you know, guys whose names have showed up in first rounds and mock drafts. Does that, you know, JQ Hardaway and Mario Eugenio and Luther Richardson. That has as that had as big a you know impact I think on getting those guys when when you know they can see the development that has happened. I mean, let's be honest now. I mean, winning and things like that have a greater effect on on 18 year olds 17 year olds than than really anything else i know that facilities and different things like that are all a big part of it but not just the success of your football team but the success of some of those guys that they you know envision themselves being like i mean jq you know being a long big kid that could play that plays corner envisions himself of being a lot like a mod and you know had a mod not done what he's done i don't know that you would have a kid from Alabama as good as he is that, you know, would be, you know, maybe as interested or tied to us if he couldn't compare himself to what Ahmad has done. Um, so those are incredible impacts, um, you know, and I, and I think it's going to, it's not just going to be a one year thing. I, mean, I think as, as the season wraps up at some point in time and the senior bowl kicks in and you're going to say, oh my goodness, look how many guys they got, you know, how many guys they got at the senior bowl. That'll be a big deal for, you know, the next class of recruiting and, then all of a sudden the combine that's going to happen that we're going to have an enormous amount of guys at and all of a sudden the draft. I mean, all those things will have an incredible impact on, you know, giving us greater opportunities to, you know, showing kids what uh, what it's really like here. And, um, you know, I think that the thing we want to continue to do is to focus on, you know, the real. And when we get into some recruiting battles, I think that I think these guys really ought to – kids ought to do a better job at recognizing the real and, and you know I say that with what do we have eight kids from Ohio and um, the production that our, our Ohio kids in particular have had probably outmatches anybody in the country I, I don't know exactly what how you list the production of some linemen I understand that but if you really look at the production of what the kids from our state especially the kids from Cincinnati have done for this program, I think uh, a lot of those young guys ought to recognize that because that's a big deal um, in my eyes. And if, if I was a kid who was being recruited or, or was in a position to you know help a kid, I'd be like, you know, look at where these kids are having success and, and what they're doing. Luke, to kind of piggyback on that, it feels like in a lot of ways Ahmad is the perfect recruit, Ahmad Gardner. Uh, you've been around some greats on defense. What, what makes him in that mix is one of the greats that you've been around, that you've coached. What makes him one of those guys that ranks up there with those? Well, he's the, the, the perfect recruit because the guy sitting up here didn't think that he was going to be able to play for us for two years, you know? So that, that tells you how good we really are, right? I mean, this skinny kid's going to come in here and I, you know what? Maybe in two years he'll be fast enough and strong enough to play for us because, you know, at whatever he was weighing, he, he probably can't run well enough or play. and you know, until he gets stronger and he proved us completely wrong. But I think, you know, everybody looks for things that, you know, they want to envision themselves and this guy matches towards this. And to see a guy that maybe, you know, was overlooked in a lot of ways to, to come in and, and not only have success, have success early. And I think a lot of young kids, you know, that's the, that's the tougher thing is, is they want to go into a program where they think they can play. And, well, do they play young guys, you know? And to see what Ahmad did as a young guy really helps us in, in talking to these guys. I know it was a big deal for JQ, uh, a guy that had a lot of opportunities and could have stayed close to home with a lot of schools down south. And he's one of those guys that's, you know, I think is, is smart enough to look and to say, okay, you know, not just because of Ahmad, but where's a place where I have a chance, you know, to play at an earlier time um, and who will play those guys early. And I think that that connection – 
and what he envisions himself of being a lot like Ahmad goes a long way. And uh, so I think it's a, it's more than just a mod. I mean, the unique thing, you know, to get into a mod is I think that, you know, you'd say, well, here's a guy that wears the sauce chain, and I don't know if I say sauce, but he has a sauce chain. I mean, I called him sauce. Yes, it doesn't mean I called him that, but he really is a humble guy. You know, he really like you go out there on a on a Wednesday practice out there where you'd say, okay, well, maybe some of these guys we got to taper down a little bit and. He's chasing Alec Pierce all the way across the field, diving after a ball. I mean, to me, that's where, you know, a guy of his caliber is different than a lot of the ones I've been around. And, uh, you know, he's not the only one, but I think being around a lot of really high-end corners, um, he's the first one I could say is pretty much at all times to be a joy to be around at practice and, and, and off the field. Who no? I, he has a, some guy. Or Ahmad has a chain that says. So I don't know why, but I guess that must be a nickname of his. Coach, uh, with you see in the playoffs, Ohio State not. Would you anticipate, or are you already seeing an upgrade in the image of this program compared to Ohio State's, either with recruits or just generally? Well, look, we, we, it's the same thing we tell our kids. We want to be us. We're not trying to be somebody else. And I think that is the best image we can have of all that we do. Um, you know, so whether it's Ohio State or whether it's Kentucky, a teams you recruit against, I know this, the more success we have, uh, the better opportunities we have to compete, and not just on the football field, but in the recruiting battles. Because I think that's where some of the, you know, the rivalries occur. And, and when I came here, I, look, a, a great mindset of mine was I hope someday we can become a rival to my alma mater. And in that way, I mean that all of a sudden, maybe they look at you and recognize that, oh, we have to battle against these guys. And whether we play them on the football field, a lot of other opportunities are in the recruiting. And, you know, that's where we continue to want to be. And that's not just Ohio State. That's the top 10 programs or the top five programs that I'm talking about. It's one thing to beat them. It's another thing to be in the mix with them in all that we do. And uh, so it still gives us that opportunity to continue to grow. We're not trying to be somebody else. Um, I've never tried to be somebody else. I don't want our kids to try to be somebody else. And so I think it kind of goes into that theme all year where – you know, hey, you're not winning by enough or you didn't play well enough. And if you're not going to get like, you know, you, it was probably 10 after six, seven games, I came in here in this exact room and said, guys, we don't have to be somebody, what, some, somebody else's vision of us. We got to continue to be us. Enjoy what it is that we do and how we do it. And I promise you that'll be good enough. Um, but again, it goes all back into the, if you're going to be a top 10 program, you got to be able to compete with those top 10 programs or top five programs, not just on the field, but on a consistent basis in all that you do. Coach, you're seeing a lot of talent coming out of Coleraine. What is it about that talent that you like so much and, and that program? Well, I, they, that group, <laughs> those guys coming from there fit, you know, who we are and what we want to be. And that whole image of, you know, this is a tough sport for tough people that every one of our kids, you know, that have come from Coleraine have thrived from the time they walk in. And I'm not saying they all start, but I mean, they just, by nature, I think what they've done there as a program over the years, um, they've been able to walk in here. And obviously they're really good football players, but there's more to it. And, and so, you know, they've had to sacrifice, they've had to commit, they've had to do some different things. When they were a triple option team, I'm sure people said, hey, you, guys, you shouldn't go there, that's a triple option, Javon Hicks. I mean, well, you're not gonna get the, like, no, we're, we love to play football, and we train and we work, and it might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but you know what? They win, and uh, we do a study. You know, we'll do a study again after 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 recruiting about basically all the high schools in Ohio and all kids that go Division One, and then how are they faring? And uh, I'm not sure there's been a better school that we've seen in the last five years that guys that have come out of. Uh, that program that have been not just gone Division One, but have been really successful, not just here, but in a lot of other places as well. The addition of Ryan Cole feels big. A kicker who's been really good in his career and had a lot of success. 
you know, how excited are you to have him in the program and see what he can do? Oh, it's great. I mean, I think competition is what you got to create. And, you know, when, when Cole went down for us this year, I think it, it created uh, or took away some of the competition of, say, who's going to get better. And uh, we all know we, we've struggled a bit in, in the kicking game, in particular field goals. Um, so him coming in is a guy that's going to be here in the spring to give us a lot of more competition um, to hopefully see right where he's taken off or where, where he was from before. And the unique thing about that, it doesn't matter where you've come from. You know, it could be Division three, Division two, four, I don't know, whatever it is, it's still the same ball. It's still kicked off the same ground, and the field goals are still the same distance, you know, the same width. Um, so it, you've got a better idea of, you know, what, what he's done and, you know, as he walks in the door, maybe what he can really do to help us. You talk about being an offensive line and defensive line driven program. Oh, line first. I'm glad you said that. You yeah. know why? I know it's okay. That's my. You're asking the Do questions. Do you have any centers? You're no. asking the questions here. <laughs> uh, you get three offensive linemen Green, Harder, and, and Dalton, and then four defensive linemen Killison, Doggett, Shepard, Eugenio. Talk about how satisfied you are with the the hall you were able to get inside i think that's the crew obviously that we lose a lot of seniors in uh o-line wise obviously we don't we got a lot of juniors but when you lose those guys those are the ones that are most difficult to replace and uh you know to have those guys we got a few of those that are coming in early as well which i think is a big deal for linemen you know both o-line and d-line because the most development is done with those guys I think the game changes for those guys more than it does anybody. Just the physicality and the size of, of what you need and the consistency of what you need to play at at that position is, is different. So it's going to fill a, a spot for us. Um, you can never come up short with O-line and D-line. I really do believe that, you know, you can move some guys around, wide outs, DBs, you know, find some athletes in some different spots. But if there's years where you come up short, and, and I mean that in spring too, in order to develop, in order to go out there like we did today and let those young guys really play. I mean, if you don't have O-line and D-line, you get nothing done. So excited about having three offensive linemen and four defensive linemen, all of which I think are really going to fit the culture of what we do really well. We've gone 22 minutes and nobody's asked about quarterback, so tell me about Luther Richardson and, <laughs> and what he can do. This would be the first. This would be the first press conference or, or recruiting uh, conference, you know, press conference that uh, that's not normally the first question. Um, but Luther's unique. I, I just did an interview with whatever ESPN radio or whatever it was that and the only person they asked about was Luther Richardson. And obviously quarterbacks are, are, are you know, a unique position, especially for us being the Desmond Ritter is a senior and we'll lose him. Um, but uh, I wish Luther was going to be able to be here in the spring. I don't think he's going to be. He's not one of the early enrollees. Um, but where he comes from, uh, he's going to have an opportunity to walk in and compete. And I just mean that he's mature beyond his years. And he's you know trained a lot from a young from a young age, having a father, been around it a lot because his dad was an NFL strength coach. So he's been around those locker rooms. He's been in those situations. He's been trained in that way. He played for Trent Dilfer in high school. Um, so he's been trained – you know, like quarterbacks should be trained with an expectation of what quarterbacks, you know, have held on them. Um, so I think that uh, I think he's going to be able to walk in the door, a highly intelligent kid to be able to pick things up really fast. And uh, he is physically going to be ready um, to compete. So I think it, uh, it's going to give us a chance to, to find out what those guys can do and what he can do in particular. Um, but he won't be able to be here probably until summer and fall camp. Does that mean Des isn't coming back? As of right now, I don't know. We're still working on that. I think he possibly could if, if you know, that we could have that sixth year that uh, I've got a little pitch for him, but I'm, I'm not sure when or if it's really going to be necessary. Um, you talked about retention and there's the COVID year. There's now these extra, like, portal spots. Do you have a sense of how many spots you have left and what you, how you want to use them, what you want to do with them? No, I don't, you know, because what you don't know exactly is, is, you know, you've got some juniors that could possibly leave, you know, Ahmad, you know, you've got uh, Josh Wiley and you've, and you've got um, Jerome Ford. So if those situations happen, then you might have to look at those spots. Uh, you've got some seniors that, you know, that are out, but maybe you come back. If they come back, then maybe you don't need to look at something in that spot. 
the transfer portal has only been something and will continue to only be something that we look to fill gaps. And when there's gaps in you know, old guys and young guys, if you have a guy leave early, that's sometimes where the gaps happen. And, uh, you know, we don't want to make our living uh, on those. Um, we've been pretty good before the transfer portal, even with the grad transfers. Um, after year one, where we kind of made a matrix to say these are the things that we really are going to look for and need if we're going to bring somebody into the program that's not a high school kid. And uh, so we won't change, but it's real. that's the most difficult thing right now is really trying to figure out roster management, where your numbers are. You know, we've been pretty fortunate. We've had guys leave, you know, over the last year. Um, but we've been really fortunate that we haven't had as many or they've left a lot of times for the right reasons, meaning they want to go play and maybe they weren't going to have that opportunity here right away. Um, so there's still a lot of those things that you just don't know. So to figure out exactly where you are numbers-wise is, is impossible. Uh-oh. When Ethan Green gets here, do you get the mats out? Because I think he thinks he can take you. Well, I was he, at wrestling think? practice. So if Ethan's list, I was at wrestling practice last week. He's Not that I'm in shape, but he's still got a little ways to go. And uh, if he wins the state, then he will move to the top of the ladder, and he'll only have to wrestle two other guys on the team to get to the champ. So if he doesn't, which I'm not saying he won't, if he doesn't, then if you don't win it, you don't get a shot at the title for at least a couple years. All right.